This is the Excess Manchester Evening Show. Cool thing happening tonight, just a couple of days after the brand new album from Slow Readers Club, Knowledge, Freedom, Power, was released into the world. I'm joined by Jim and Aaron from the band to talk us through it. How are you doing, boys? Good, thank you. Very well. Cheers for having us. What's it like in the days? I mean, obviously, I imagine there's a moment of relief now when the album's out and things are kind of out in the open, but what are the days like leading up to the release of a new album? Is it kind of expectation, nerves, excitement, a combination of everything? Yeah, I think it's a bit of everything, really, yeah. Just worried, just, make, just making sure everything goes right, you know, um, and then hope, hoping that you do decent numbers. Um, but more importantly, hoping that people like it. Do you kind of have that feeling in your chest of, what if no one likes it? What what if everyone hates it? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because obviously our previous albums have, have an audience and they're, and they're well loved and everything else and you you want to please those people you also want to uh move along creatively and mm. everything else and uh open yourselves up to new people as well hopefully um i don't know i think it's 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 easy in a way because you can set you know, you've some tracks have gone into the world so there's like three tracks sure. out there before in, in advance of the album we've seen reviews trickle through and stuff like that so we've sort of have, we've seen some validation already that that it's not rubbish. So uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it seems to be well received so far. So okay, yeah, excited for people to take it home and listen to it and tell the mates about it, that kind of thing. Well, we're going to go through the whole album today, playing every track off it on Excess Manchester. So I'm about to hit play on track number one. Before we delve into knowledge, freedom, power, is there anything you want to say to prepare us for what's to come? Any precursor? Strap in. And Strap enjoy in. It. Yeah. Real yeah. well, track number one off the album. Let's go. This is Modernize. It's time to mentioned earlier that you wanted <laughs> to move things forward with the album. Like there's a consciousness of entertaining the existing fan base, but wanting to de- develop stuff as well. Is that one of the songs that you think did that? Because I think Modernize sounds. Not remarkably different, but there's certainly a shift in it musically from what's come before. There's almost like a... I listened to it and I went, oh, there's a little bit of Chemical Brothers in there, maybe a bit of Beastie Boys. It's kind of got that influence to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like a bit of Primal Scream and stuff like that. Now yeah. Well. Like, yeah, it's just sort of... Um, yeah, I think it It felt like it could be an aggressive tune. The, the lyrically, it was sort of, sort of uh, quite uh, aggressive. So it, was, uh, it felt like it could, you know punch you in the stomach kind of thing so we might we might as well go all, all in on it we were really pleased when it come out in the end because it, it sounds better than what you know demoed, yeah, than yeah, what yeah, we yeah, demoed yeah, yeah. and that, that's always the aim as well you demo something you go in the studio and you just want to come out the other side with something better than what you've demoed because <laughs> if it's not then something's gone wrong hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. right well let's yeah. move on with the album track number two off it this is off slow readers club knowledge freedom power the album we're playing in full tonight on the excess manchester evening show this is afterlife the picture here is breaking up am i strong enough afterlife track number two from knowledge freedom power from slow readers club again another tune that i felt was a evolution of what you did previously but going the other way to modernize in terms of it's kind of like i guess a bit more stripped back when you're thinking about the evolution you're going to make with music where do you are you consciously going out and looking for inspiration and listening to stuff or is it more organic than that i think we'll each individually be listening to our own stuff like you know this was led by kurt really because it was a guitar guitar thing originally that i sort of had lived a a vocal melody over um but yeah i think we're always listening to to new music new music this one has probably most in common with our previous records i'd say like it's sort of a big melancholy ballad and that one we we messed around with that one a lot in it's... practice when we demoed it even in, even recording it in the studio and because not that we write songs to a limit of time but you know we're not going to do a Pink Floyd, you know, half an hour tune. Mm. And, you, know, you, you sort of, you aim for it in around three or four minutes, don't you? Mm. You know, and but if the song makes you go beyond that, or if it's less than that, then wh- whatever, you know, you, you take it. But this one, it was like, right, we, we we need to make sure we nail it. And, it, you know, at one point, I think we had it, and it was really long at one point. One, it was far too long. 
So then when you have to cut bits out, it's just, it's hard, isn't it? I thought that might have been a full structure as well, but some ideas don't make it to a finished yeah. tune as well. They just go, right, well, it's not really, yeah, not really working out. So it, get, it just sort of goes off and dies in a corner somewhere. Yeah. Right, we might pick up on a few of these themes later, but we've <laughs> yeah. got to crack on with the album. There's so much to get through. So let's get into track number three. This is Sacred Song. Searching for a new land. Each day a brand new star. Shine like only you can. How bright you are. Really bright and optimistic is a song, that one, I think. On an album that in general feels quite reflective maybe dark at times it's a slow reader's club album it's going for a dark yeah. at times right <laughs> that's Aaron for you <laughs> yeah. um, what themes were you drawing from on well, this I, album I, to be honest I wanted to at least have <laughs> some positivity in this record I was very conscious of the fact that we're living through very difficult times and um, there's a lot of bleakness yeah. in the news and everything else so I, people didn't need my dystopian visions necessarily so I wanted to have some positive message in there it's like knowledge freedom power is a positive message tune and this one is another one and this one's sort of a, like a imagined goddess saviour, sort of, a hot, you know, uh, imagining that there's going to be like some female god that's going to come and take the pain away kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, it's really sort of, up, you know, uplifting pop tune. I really love um, Kurt's guitar riff on it. It sounds like a synth on the record because there was synth backing it up. It's like bubbles along. And when we were writing it, I sort of, we co- codenamed it Lemon because it reminded me of, uh, there's an electronic band called Lemon Jelly. From like early, yeah, yeah. early nice 2000, for ducks. it reminded me a little bit of that, and also Flaming Lips it reminded me a bit of that as well. But uh, yeah, I really like this track. Um, it's just it's fun to just move into to have different, we move into different territory and and do the unexpected as well. And I think this record does from tra- track to track give you a lot of variety and stuff. And it's uh, I think there are some bands that have one sound that they you know home in on and do variations on the same idea yeah. we rightly or wrongly don't do that and try and do yeah. something different with each track you're gonna move on to the next track on this album which was the third single that came on at the last one before the album dropped lay your troubles on me what can you tell us about this tune it's a it's a it's a bit of a mental health type tune this one like reaching out to a friend going through difficult times um it's very direct in its message you know what i mean like the, i think the chorus line the, the lay your troubles on me line came more or less as we were like jamming it in the room it is like it says it's um you know about mental health and stuff like that i just think it's good that that's the first line of the song and a lot of people maybe who've been through issues in mental health and stuff like that could just latch onto that straight away instead of it being a some drums and then it goes into a verse sort of thing but yeah i think I, I, that for me that's probably the one where we've gone in with the tune and we've come out with it and i, I me personally it's the one i've been happiest with you know, I don't think we could have done any more with it. Come lay your troubles on me. We'll fight the fear. That's How Could You Know from Slow Readers Club knowledge freedom power their new album three days old we're playing through the whole album on the excess manchester evening show tonight aaron and jim in the studio with me the next track off the album is the title track knowledge freedom power how important is it to get a title track right how much consideration goes into picking that song and then that being a reflection of the album as a whole uh yeah it's pretty important you just want a a memorable title for the album don't you like that ideally so and that one, that one track, I think that felt, track came first. Yeah. That, that, it, it came before the title of the album. If obviously, if you, if you know what I mean, that track was written and then yeah, right. I can't remember if you are David or someone who said it might have probably been you said that should be the name of the album. You know, because it's it's catchy and it not, you know it, it's got meaning to it. Oh, Title track from Knowledge, Freedom, Power, the new album from Slow Readers Club, and the first single that came from it. How many albums is this? Is this the fifth album we're in now? Uh, it's the fifth full album, isn't it? Because like, five and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninety One Days was eight tracks, which was like we did as a lockdown yeah. record after Joe Return. So I don't know if you'd call that an EP. I would. I'd call that an album. 
mentioned earlier kind of like the nerves and excitement about releasing an album for the first time knowledge freedom power is the first single so the first time people got to taste that album i'm sure those nerves and excitement was kind of similar if not more around the release of that does that get easier when you get whether it's five or six or seven albums when we finally narrowed that down to a single number does that get easier every time uh i think the i think it's more difficult as yeah. in preparing for with the release of an album because you've got previous targets on your back right if you know what i mean so like um joy to return got to number nine in the charts you know so straight away if you don't get that and it's like we, 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 we've got no you know we don't have expectations that we've not set ourselves targets but if you don't that was my get next that, question <laughs> yeah well i'm just pleased that we're still able to make music and sure. put music out there and, and tour it we'd like to be touring more than we are doing yeah, it's just, it's been a perfect storm of COVID, Brexit. If something was going to finish us off, COVID yeah, yeah. and Brexit would have finished us off and it's not, we're still here. Bounce back through it. Yeah, so. The next track I'm playing is, and I didn't plan this in any way, is what might have been, which <laughs> is kind of appropriate at this point. Uh, it's a breakup tune. Um, uh, like, it's got quite, quite quite a good little piano riff uh, to kick the tune off. Um, it's good, it's a good pop record. Um Quite like you know, so it's at the pop end of the of the album, I'd say. Um, what would you what did what it's you a, it starts with a guitar? Is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking. Dun, dun, of, how could you know? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, sorry. He's obviously I'm he's not only like, like you. Know, yeah. <laughs> so when he, the link broke for Aaron as well, <laughs> luckily the link's it, broken well, in my head. Well, this can be a luckily in the no, band. I'm the only one, one who listens to no. our tunes. Yeah, this one's. I, I remember it now. No, this one's sort of. It came quite easy. Cool. This one. Yeah, it's top. It's like a. It's quite Smiths influenced, and it's sort of okay. vocal melody. It sort of goes all over the all over the place. Something sort of uh, not baritone quite, but like up into a falsetto in the verses. Has a, a bit of a Nile Rodgers vibe to it as well with the yeah. guitar, which, yeah, yeah. which 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 we like. Well, let's remind Aaron what it sounds like. This yeah. is what might have been new from Slow Readers Club, <laughs> Excess Manchester. Hang up the phone and catch my breath. That's what might have been the next track from Slow Readers Club on their new album, Knowledge, Freedom, Power. Jim and Aaron's still in the studio with me. We're going to play Seconds Out in a moment, which was one of my favourite tracks on the album. And I thought, musically, it felt really similar to Modernise. Right. Although not quite as in your face as Modernise. Right, and yeah, yeah. it got me thinking about where the songs start and where they come from. And you already mentioned that a lot of songs come from jams together. Yeah. But are all these songs on this album, are they all kind of from the same period of time? Are they all from the last 12 months? Or is yeah. there a lot that are from the previous? No, 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 it's all, it's all been from the last 12 months. So, yeah. And they, they probably were, key, both of those are sort of keys, tunes that I'd, I'd have started at, started at home. We do tend to write quite dark tunes. So if, if and there's always bad news, and, uh, you know, the news, I'd say, even on a good day, yeah, 60% yeah. is negative. Yeah. And, and, you know, but... Um, yeah, it's terrible what's going on in the world at the minute. Um, but it's just everyone's, we're all living in that world. Yeah. And, you know, if, at the time, if Aaron's writing lyrics about it, it's just because, and, and I think that's why people might associate well with the lyrics as well. Me, me the, the last track, which we'll talk about later on, um, I think I love Aaron's lyrics in general on this album and all the previous albums. But I think because lyrically, it's always about like that time and I can relate to it and everyone can relate to it. I think that's why people sing the songs back to us at shows and you know and, and they know all the words and stuff like that because he obviously touches a nerve with, with people out it's there it's cathartic and it's like gets it out there it's like because it's the, that sense of powerlessness I think everybody's feeling on a, for multiple reasons at the moment like cost of living and everything else you go going you can't affect or the government or you know there's so much that you can't as an individual affect that you do you do feel like a little bit lost, I suppose, and that's where that—that's kind of where the the, the that's where that feeling came from, anyway. Okay. Well, seconds out is the tune you're going to hear next from Knowledge, Freedom, Power from Slow Readers Club. It's after this on Excess Manchester. I guess you have to laugh. It falls away so fast. I've all I can. No you guys rarely, I think, I'm trying to. Mentally go for rarely write about song. <laughs> Is that you're going to say? Gonna say? <laughs> yeah. that like, but you rarely kind of do totally stripped back stuff. And there are a few moments on this album where I thought it was going to happen, and then 
there's always like a drop or a hit or it builds or it kind of goes really anthemic. Is that just the way that as artists you enjoy music? You like it to kind of get big and overblown and kind yeah, of have that so. kind of... I kind of only describe it as a feeling in your chest when you listen to it, that kind of feeling. Yeah, we, we were talking recently actually about that might be in a possible direction for the next record. I mean, we don't we don't actually, rightly or wrongly, we don't go what what we're doing son- sonically, yeah. musically for this record, what's the direction? Yeah. We tend to go, it's a track by track kind of thing and you and you, you do the kind of treatment that serves the, the, the song, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, it might be something we can explore more in the future, like a, a bit being um, not necessarily unplugged, but like very sort of lo-fi and mm. chilled and that kind of thing. But I, I personally like tunes like that mm. and I think we all like songs like that. And when you play them live, you know, there's, there's no better feeling than playing a, a song live where it, it it's quite relaxed and calm and then, you yeah. know, bang, you know, a, a big drop comes in or whatever it is and everyone gets buzzing. Right, let's get with two tracks to go on the album. So the penultimate one is this. It's Forget About Me, Excess Manchester. Time has come to call you out. All you've ever said, no, it's never been true. We've almost reached the end of Knowledge, Freedom, Power, the new album from Slow Readers Club. There's one more track to go, No You Never. Jim, you said you wanted to talk about this track. I don't want to preempt what you want to say about it in any way by asking questions. So what is it? No, you never. Yeah. Lyrically. Um, just, I find, I've said this to the band before, like out of all the, the tunes on the album, when I'm driving around him, if I, I've listened to the album more than anyone in the band and they'll, I'll tell you that. I, I've, I've probably killed it, but I still like it, fortunately. But um, this tune, I've probably listened to more than any of the others, even though, Lay Your Troubles On Me is probably, you know, I, I think it's one of the best things mm. we've, we've ever done. Um, but just lyrically, it's like, um, and, and Aaron will tell you, it's like about, you know, growing up in a council estate, which we did. Um, and sort of, you, you, you're you already mapped out to not have big dreams. And, and you know, not not that your parents do that. I just mean that the system yeah, yeah. is sort of, you're going to end up being this, you know, people presume where you're going to end up in life. And um, it's just like a, yeah, lyrically, it just reminds me of, of that. And, you know, no, you never did dare have those grand ideas, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it and feel yeah. like a little bit of two fingers up almost? Yeah, like, and I, I literally belt this one out <laughs> fully out of tune. <laughs> if I'm driving in my van, if anyone's driven past me and I've been belting this one out with the windows open and they must think he needs to give it a break. But, yeah, I always find that lyrically this one, I'm really attached to it and I just, yeah. Anyway, How I'll start filling up if I carry on. <laughs> How important is it to have a final track that kind of it's not I guess it's the opposite of setting the tone. I don't know what the phrase is. I guess the note you want to leave people with, the thing that they'll take away. I guess it's like the it's the end of a gig, isn't it? But yeah, it's the the, the record version of that. How important is it to have something that kind of leaves people? And do you do you try and hint at what's coming next, or what do you it's, do with that? It's weird. I mean, from a gig, we normally just it's a big climactic. Yeah. Boom, sort of that, like to leave yeah, everyone yeah, yeah, with yeah, that yeah, buzzing, with that yeah, thought yeah. and buzzing. Yeah. yeah, like we did that. We do tend to do it with lunatic, but then I've, I think on this record and on Joe Return, like the the if there's a I let this one is probably one of the more chilled out tunes on the record, maybe for most of it anyway. Um, it's like a I don't know. It's like a little sort of I don't know. Yeah, a release. Yeah, it's a release. Yeah. Do you still a, think of an album? Sex fag. <laughs> <laughs> do you still like think of an album as a? As a, as a journey through it because I guess there's different thinking about this some of it the thinking is put all your good songs at the start and confront low and that was kind of it was done a lot in the 90s yeah. it yeah. was like all the big singles at the start and nowadays people don't listen to albums anymore it's why doing stuff like this is such a joy because you get to listen yeah. to an album in full and get taken on that journey so do you still think of it that way in terms of you want to take someone from track one into track 10 we do don't we when we're discussing it yeah front loading would just be daft wouldn't it like I, don't I think know. we've maybe front loaded Cavalcade. Yeah. Because the, 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 like Hot Fuss was uh, probably a, a, a point of comparison around that time. And you go, mm. like, the first five tracks out of that are just ridiculous. But um, yeah, but yeah, like you say, like people don't listen to albums that they get whatever's served to them on yeah. Spotify or what they hear on radio. And it's like, yeah, the, the song has to work within within itself. But I think it does, it's a play for people that do take the time to listen to the album one track after the other. It's. It's, yeah. a, it's a surprising, you know what I mean? It's like you want one track to the next, you go, oh, right, okay. Mm. That's the that's the weird thing about like Spotify and stuff nowadays and, and just 
having everything there you can pick from. Like back in the day, you'd buy a CD and you had to listen to it because that was the thing you yeah. bought that week. You know, you spent your tenner on that in that week. And then, so little gems at the end of an album that you'd probably, whether this song gets served to anyone on radio or on yeah, yeah. Um, streaming sites or whatever, prob- might not do. So they might never hear it, but we still like to think that someone would catch hold of it and go, wow, but yeah, if you had a CD, people would discover this themselves and, and maybe they'd really like it, but I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of good things to I wonder, what, everything I wonder what happens with secret tracks now and stuff like you know, like on Nirvana where there's like a, yeah. I mean, it'd still that be on the same one, same that that last track of the record and then they'd just be a period of silence. Yeah. Ash nineteen seventy seven yeah. with the <laughs> sixth song at the end, which yeah. is just them throwing up for three Stone Roses. <laughs> <laughs> Stone Roses did one, didn't they? When they, they had um, is it on Second Coming? Can't it remember. Sort of... Where it, it was like track ninety odd or something weird right. like that. I, I can't remember. I'm sure anyone listening knows that and they probably said you're wrong, but <laughs> it's well, definitely something. Let's finish off with the post coital cigarette that is No You Never final track off Knowledge, Freedom, Power No you never had nothing we don't hear No you never escaped from future fear That's it, Slow Readers Club new album done, Knowledge, Freedom, Power, that is the final track No You Never. Congratulations boys, it's a brilliant album. Thank you What's next? I know you don't want to, I don't mean in terms of musically what's next, because I'm sure you don't want to think about, it must be one of those things you don't want to think about. <laughs> yeah. having a kid, Funny you don't that, want to think about another kid for at least a couple of years after <laughs> you've had an album. But what, what is next for the band? What are your hopes for this? I know you don't want to set targets, but is it just kind of university love? Do you want your fans to buzz off it? you want to find new fans, normal stuff? All of that. Yeah, yeah. all of the above. Yeah, you just want to open more doors. Um, yeah, all our fans that we've got, we're fortunate to have really passionate fans. Hope all of them uh, really love it. Uh, and if they don't, then we'll try harder next time. <laughs> but, uh, but you, you know, you know, you'd see them singing at gigs. You know, we 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 touring, and yeah. you don't like you when you play the new ones. People know them. People love them. People say this album is the best stuff you ever done. Opens up doors to festivals, more gigs, support slots with with other acts out there, or whatever it might be. So, all those things, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Good luck with it. Fingers crossed for you. Thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate you. you talking me through the album. And yeah, good luck for what's next. Thanks, man. Cheers. Thank you.